Get ready for Buzz TV adventure. Exploring and discovering exciting destinations. I'm Jeff Vogel for Vero Buzz TV. We are on an adventure touring Dodger Town uh, with Brady Ballard, Vice President. Uh, one of many Vice Presidents, or are you the Vice no, President? No, 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 I'm one of many, but no, definitely not the. And, and what are your responsibilities here at historic Dodger Town? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's a contribution of, of like everybody around here. It, it's overlapping, but a little bit of our, our marketing and, and some of the tour elements of knowing the facility and getting out in the community, some of those things, as well as our internet and social stuff. Today you're going to take us on a, a quick tour of the facility uh, and uh, show us things maybe that no one, ordinary people don't get to see possibly or or those things that everyone can see if they come out here, right? A little bit of both, yes. Um, we'll start with the aerial map of the of the property and, and just point out the different areas for us where we are now and what we're going to be looking at. Yeah, well, Historic Dodger Town today is an 80 acre facility. Uh, so it's got five full baseball fields, what we call full, so 90 foot bases, you know, for the bigger kids or the adults, and then you've got actually a youth facility that can handle youth baseball as well as softball. Um, we also have a, what we call the multi-purpose field, but soccer, lacrosse, football, where we've had our Canadian Football League teams, um, among others, uh, up that way. But we've got our conference center area, where we host a variety of business activities, social events, weddings, and different things. An 89-room hotel right here on property, which is one of the big elements of what a lot of these teams are looking for, is because we're, we're a one-stop shop. We're a final destination to all the groups that come down and train uh, and do that. Is they're right here on property walking to their dining room, walking to their fields for activity. Historic Dodger Town has actually evolved into something bigger and greater than it ever was, hasn't it? it yeah, it really has. I mean, what might surprise people is our economic impact today is greater than even when the Dodgers were here. We're spread out over a full year. We're active basically 365 days a year and through a variety of sports and activities, even non-sports. And some, some of the property elements are actually are will, will be new to the community if they haven't been out here in a while, right? To some extent, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're a little over two years now on the youth um, baseball and softball facility, but you know, we've hosted now the high school state championship for a few years for girls softball, and now the junior college state championship as well. So some pretty high-profile events have come, uh, and as well as the football field, like I said, with the Canadian Football League teams that have been here. And speaking of softball, you have a national connection to that, don't you? We are also now the southern home to Softball Factory, which is one of the preeminent training uh, organizations in the U.S. How busy during the year? Are are the facilities? Uh, extremely active. We kind of like to say the hotel room itself probably gets three years of activity in a year. Uh, you know, because we're, a lot of kids are coming through there, often staying more than two to a room, and uh, the wear and tear of just the overall facility, the games already, we've had close to 2,000 games and practices on our baseball fields uh, since January 1st. Year-round activity? Absolutely. Uh, you know, the things, you get summertime, there's going to be more weekend events, uh, some week-long camps, clinics, things of that nature, a little more hit or miss in the fall uh, as certain sports start to slow down, but absolutely active throughout the year, and once we hit mid-December uh, basically through mid-May it's it's each and every day all right we're gonna hop on the golf cart and where are you gonna take us first you through the whole property okay let's go Brady we're in the golf cart and you're taking us around you're doing the driving so I'll hold the microphone where where are we headed now uh, we're gonna head down Duke Snyder Drive with the main entrance leading down to Holman Stadium uh, we'll pop into Holman not uh, any activities today, but we've got about a five-day tournament come that'll start on Thursday. So all the grounds crew and folks are just in preparation for that event coming up. And then we can swing further on down to those new um, softball and youth baseball fields as well before we cross over the bridge into the rest of the property. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We're gonna beat them and bust them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. 
Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Brady, is this the, the best view in the house or what? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a nice shot to come up the ramp right, you know, to see Holman Stadium as it stands. And not a lot of stadiums like this still with the open air, the trees that are a part of the facility. But built in 1953, it's obviously historic. It's got the open air dugouts and uh, it just gives a, a great feeling to a lot of people when they come up this way. Do players enjoy playing on this field absolutely I mean when we have an events and tournaments here we always make sure uh, to, that all the teams get at least one game just depending on if it's a three-day event or week long um, but we try to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to play in the stadium because that's something they you know really well, that, that's got to be a thrill yeah it really is for parents and kids alike I mean it, it's a different feeling nowadays kids have played in a lot of nice stadiums and facilities but there's still something that they all kind of um, it gets an all factor for them I mean you can you can almost envision the the glory days of this particular stadium yeah and I think that's a part of you know when the teams come here they see all the old pictures and the different things so they've seen the stadium and maybe some of its past elements and some of those great Dodgers that have been here and then they get the chance to walk out on the same field yeah is, is this um, is this facility the way it is worth preserving as it is absolutely I mean as it is in a historical sense but also keeping it modern in some ways too I mean you can see we're doing a little seat project that's going on right now down the first baseline so we obviously still have to keep it uh, up to date as well as historical uh, do a little bit of name dropping um, uh, who else other than uh, Jackie Robinson uh, played on this field well, between just all the Dodgers, I mean, Sandy Koufax, Duke Snyder, uh, go forward a generation or two, Steve Garvey, Fernando Valenzuela, Mike Piazza, even current day guys like a Clayton Kershaw. So, uh, you know, it spans a number. But all the visiting teams that have come here, you can find that on our website. There's Hall of Famers from, you know, throughout the course of baseball that have all played here as visitors as well. Yeah. Um, and, and working here for you, is this uh, sort of a dream job? I've had, uh, well, uh, my office has never been more than about 100 feet from a baseball field over yeah. 11 years, whether it was in minor league baseball on the business side or, or now. So, yeah, to work in sports in general has been a, been a blessing. Yeah. Um, now, what, what's the availability for uh, local residents to come out here and enjoy a ball game? Available to them as any other. Uh, again, just depends on the events that are going on. That uh, oftentimes it's an amateur tournament or showcase of that type of nature. So uh, kids can be from maybe from regional Florida or they could be from Canada, New Hampshire, Michigan. For all you know, it just depends week to week. Now, did I understand you correctly? When you when you have the the training camps and things, you, the, they get to play on this field at least one time also. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be a, a chance for maybe some local um, baseball fans to come out and, and give a little support. Yeah, we have a few folks, whether they're here to, in the stadium to watch, we have folks that will you know, bring a chair or sit in some of the little smaller bleachers we have and watch games on the other fields as well. Is that information available on your website? It's all on historicdodgertown.com. Between the event listing, uh, may or may not be pricing, just depend on the events. Most, of, most admission, if there is one, might be 5 or $10, and that $10 could cover you the whole weekend. Right. So, and, um, and, and you have uh, special events events throughout the year also that bring out the community right? yeah I mean the biggest one still being the Jackie Robinson celebration yeah. game we had just almost 6,000 people here in mid-April for a minor league game with the Mets and Manatees yeah. that's been a phenomenal community event excellent all right so let's uh, hit the road and see what else we can find all right how can I help my daughter with her reading searching for help with docs and reading uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading Information on hot water heating. No. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music. Playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait. I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Brady, where have you brought us? 
We're down at the uh, youth complex, the quad. So this is where we're able to conduct youth baseball for kids 12 and under, as well as girls softball through all ages. And this is just a couple years young, right? Yeah, uh, it was early 2012. So it's allowed us to host the girls high school softball state championships for a few years, which then in turn brought us the junior college state championships as well. Let's go walk out on the field. Yeah. When these four fields are in full use, um, you've got uh, quite a crowd here, quite quite a lot going on yeah, for the do. I mean, there's a lot of people. It's close, closely. Uh, gathered field so you get a lot of people coming and going uh, but it's fun in that way too you've got teams you know who might be grabbing a bite to eat just over in our little picnic area between the two fields um, but again set for baseball so we've got you know mound that can be adjusted for age groups and then that mound can come out for softball but yeah it's it's pretty fun uh, when it's really buzzing with activity as well the variety of sports that are played on these fields uh, baseball teams from as far away as Canada. Again, youth teams, uh, typically eight years old, maybe the youngest that we find, up to 12 year olds on these fields before they graduate on to the to the bigger fields. But um, yeah, we've our uh, President's State tournament had 20 plus teams from Minnesota alone. They had a number of teams here on the youth side as well. But New Hampshire, uh, a lot from the Northeast and North Midwest. On the marketing end of it, this has got to keep you pretty busy. Our whole staff, and we've got a great director of sales and, and also vice president um, in Jeff Biddle, who, you know, that's that's his, this is his baby in bringing all these teams down uh, to the community, whether it be for, again, for, a, say, a three or four day tournament or a week long, but it's also to make Vero Beach a vacation destination. I mean, the families that come here, they want to know what else they're going to be able to do besides just come to the ball games, and so right. they really enjoy the beach, the restaurant, and the community that's here. Yeah, so that, I mean, that really makes it a year-round attraction for all groups, and uh, and I would, I would think a, an ideal destination for anyone who, um, teams out of you spoke of Minnesota I mean this has got to be a great place for them yeah I mean in February it's barely 50 degrees on some days and the kids are still out there they're hanging by the pool or making sure they go to the beach because to them this is uh, this is Florida warmth even in those early you know winter months yeah do kids when they come here do they do you find that the youngest generation of players do they appreciate um, what what has gone on before them? I think that's something they learn when they get here. Again, they get the chance to uh, to walk down the Hall of Fame hallway, which we'll go down here shortly. So once they see the history, and then parents, grandparents, things of that nature, they you know they start to tell a few stories and point at this guy in a photo and say, hey, he played right out here. And you know they know Jackie Robinson. I think they know Sandy Koufax, but there's probably some names they're not as familiar with. But uh, yeah, they definitely get a grasp of it, especially once they're here. The addition of these fields has really made it viable um, for teams from out of state and conferences to come here and utilize this property? Well, it was, it was needed to compete. I mean, what, what's going on today and, and what is the youth destination model uh, before we could only handle the 13 years older and up. And to begin to be able to compete and be a full destination, these youth fields were absolutely needed. And, and the softball side. Softball, money invested in, in women's sports, Title IX. You know, this was huge to have the softball events here as well. Yeah. You mentioned the, the uh, Hall of Fame and the Conference Center, are we going to see those two? Yeah, absolutely, we'll head over that way. Okay, let's go. Brady, we're back in the golf cart at Historic Dodger Town and we are headed where? We're going to cross over the bridge, fields one and two, and head in the direction of the Conference Center and show you the rest of campus. And you also have um, good training facilities here, I mean indoor? Two fitness gyms um, that uh, teams absolutely take advantage of as well, covered batting cages. Uh, you know, so again, that protects against the weather elements and, and the heat at times too. You've got a, a couple really big events coming up, and those are things you plan year-round to do. Yes. Yeah, I mean, things are planned out six months, nine months, a year ahead at times. So many of our events have become an annual thing now that, you know, our President's Day tournament, our high school and college spring training that brought down 176 schools through the early part of the spring. You know, the minute they leave, they're already making plans for next year. Brady, this does not look like a baseball field. No, this is part of our involvement. Um, we call it the multi-purpose field, or it's the old field four, but it's 100 yards wide by 130 yards long. And this is where we're doing football, including, again, those Canadian football teams that have professional uh, that have come down here early in the spring. High school and college as well have been here, but soccer, lacrosse, really allows us to be a, uh, a multi-sport destination. Soccer's been huge for a long time, but I actually have personally been surprised at the popularity of lacrosse recently. It's definitely a growing sport, starting to pull uh, some athletes away from football and some other sports. But it's very strong in this area, so we've had some destination camps and we've had some local events and local tournaments too. Yeah.
The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach in Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com or call 772-777-1382. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. Now she's holding on for dear life. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. This is a Florida historic landmark, yeah, isn't it? A Florida Heritage Landmark, Historic Dodger Town, is now recognized by the state uh, with a lot of credit going to the Indian River County Historical Society for that recognition. They worked hard to, to garner all the requirements that have to be met to, to get this um, status. But this was announced last November, uh, which was a fun time because we had a Dodgers adult camp, so we had a lot of old Dodger players that were a part of this unveiling. And where are we now? In, in front of what building? We're in front of the conference center, so we're going to take a walk up that way. This is an area that, uh, where we feed all of our, the athletes and, and other folks here, but also meeting spaces and rooms that allow us to do some non-sports things as well. We've had uh, day meetings for businesses. We've had multi-day and night you know, um, team training activities. We have some corporate groups that come in, utilize the whole facility over a few days, and um, you know, kind of build on that team camaraderie and the non-sports side. Historic Dodger Town has indeed made history, hasn't it? <laughs> I think this room exemplifies it. This is the Jackie Robinson room, one of our larger uh, meeting spaces uh, and, and an area that is just pretty cool to walk around and check out the photos and some of the things that have happened in here. You can see we're starting to break down from some, some uh, weekend events where we actually held a nice dinner here for a corporate group. From team training and presentations to more formal or even casual dinners, we've had kind of everything in here. The pictures on the wall are? A bit of the timeline and history of the facility, starting with you know Mr. Holman and, and uh, key to the city going to the Brooklyn Dodgers uh, back in its earliest days but you can see you know I'm sure one of the Jeeps that was left behind from this being a formal naval training facility the the land here was a naval training facility and then it's adding to the history of the yeah, property ab absolutely that's there were two-story barracks that were here so there was this big wide open space that was set to house a lot of uh, generally men you know coming off of World War II but so the the land was gifted back to the the city and um, you know they had to find a purpose for it. The government had given it back at that point, and, and they found good use for it. Winding right? down, and, and I think it's been a, it's been credited to Mrs. Holman as much as anyone that said a baseball team would be a, a great uh, tenant or partner to have here. And uh, she specified even the Brooklyn Dodgers because they were the biggest team back then. Oh. So they brought them here, kind of wined and dined uh, some of the Dodgers brass, and gave them no reason to leave. And next thing you know, they're set up for you know, for 60 years. This next picture? Uh, again, Bud Holman and uh, Walter O'Malley, that plaque is actually back still at the stadium, and that was in 1953 when they opened up Holman Stadium. Neat. And, and this next one right here? Uh, picture day, and that's a good thing, because <laughs> I don't know all, but uh, you know, every, most of the pictures here have a little uh, placard here to the side. So this was picture day during spring training, and so uh, you know, Duke Snyder's in line, Pee Wee Reese, Gil Hodges, a lot of big names, Campanella in the background. Uh, and right behind us here is, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, more, more professional baseball players here. <laughs> well, some, not all. Uh, Emmett Kelly, a famous uh, clown from, from back in the early 50s. But uh, he came down as a part of Dem Bums, you know, as the Dodgers nickname was, too, at the time, and had some fun. And that's right there at Holman Stadium. You were uh, telling me about uh, the special relationship between this facility and the county. Well, it's a county-owned facility. Um, and we are the primary tenant, so we're, we're here as, as a staff to maintain and bring business to the community, put heads in beds throughout, and uh, and part of the upkeep. Peter O'Malley is our president and overseeing you know the business that's here. Obviously, this facility kind of evolved and grew and 
uh, under his father's leadership as well as his throughout all that time. And so it means means a lot to the O'Malley family, the Dodgers history, and a lot to the area. Yeah, it means a lot to Vero Beach and Indian River County. Had, had the county not stepped up to the plate, what would have happened, do you think, to this area? Well, it's, you know, there's been a couple times where this facility's come close right. to, without having a purpose to, to being closed down. And that's where minor league baseball stepped in first. And some folks know the brief history as Vero Beach Sports Village. But since then, Mr. O'Malley, a couple former Dodgers, well, as well as Mr. O'Malley's sister, uh, but Chanho Park and Hideo Nomo are all part of our, our ownership group, if you will, and uh, help help in the long-term future of this facility, along with, obviously, that support of the Indian River County. Yeah. All right. We, we have one more stop. And yeah, uh, we'll have a lot more pictures down the hall, in fact. So when we turn the corner, most people don't realize they look how long this hall yeah. all of a sudden becomes. The odds of winning seven Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I'm Tony Braxton. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com or call 772-777-1382. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. This building housed all the executives, all the players. This was the main building for many, many years. So you had clubhouses here. The fitness gym is through here. So this is where a lot of those folks and visitors come through you right. know, that are part of the events and then really start to grasp all that happened here. That's got to be a thrill for any youngster coming in here. Yeah, I think so. This is, and again, they may be told certain things even if they're looking it up on our website before they come down from wherever they're coming from. Once they start to really see all this and know, hey, I just played a game there or I will be playing right. there later, you know, they, they get a better understanding. Yeah, it's it's the idea that you're actually walking on the same the same soil that, that these players walked on. Yeah, and you know, from Holman Stadium to Fields 1 and 2, those haven't changed in their location and their setup, you know, since 1948. So if you're playing second base, you're right where Jackie Robinson stood. If you're a shortstop, you're right where Pee Wee Reese was. Yeah. Tell me what this picture is that we're looking at now. Uh, probably some of the more famous Dodgers from the 50s. You got four Hall of Famers and what a lot of people would say should be a fifth in, in Gil Hodges. But, uh, you know, from Duke Snyder, Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, Pee Wee Reese, and Hodges on the right. You know, pretty pretty stout lineup uh, that the Dodgers offered. And this picture was taken here. Yes, yes. Every just the, um, outside of a couple game shots, everything right. was taken here. Uh, and you know, when the Dodgers left, none of this was here. So this has all been part of uh, putting the rebranding back in the facilities. The walls were left bare, and you know, not a lot of this, the history was still here in that way. So this has all been part of our commitment back to the facility. Do you do you get a lot of um, uh, former players coming coming back to to here? We've had a few, absolutely. And there's some obviously that live here locally as well. The Dodgers adult camp brought a good number of them back in one one visit but uh you know to be able to come we've had garvey and say back as a part of that camp and to hear their stories to hear what this place meant to them as a 19 20 21 year old who's just at that point in time just trying to make a career as a, right. as a ball player and, you know to know that they became famous dodgers later on this is where they became men in their words uh you know that this place brought a lot to them Brady Ballard, Vice President here at Historic Dodger Town. Where are we now? We're in the iconic Stadium Club Lounge. Iconic. What iconic. makes it so iconic? Uh, just, you know, when you see the setup of it, you know, this is where the players could kind of wind their day down. Um, you know, not a place, at least during the Dodger days, unless you were at some big party that the general public got to come to. But this facility was built so, you know, a place to all, relax. All their needs were all their needs were met, and that included some socialization and things of that nature. But today, this area is used for you know, again with all those corporate groups that come in, whether it be a little happy hour, social hour, things of that nature, or just recreation with the pool tables and and some things that, it, again, it's still all about team building. Whether it's been in your sports or you may be in a white collar you know franchise, but. Um, this is an area where people come together and, and you know, when they leave here, it's a part of the memories because there's just a lot that you know, can happen in the room. Everybody needs some downtime and um, this is a 
perfect place to relax, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Again, to just kind of bring those folks together, we'll drink at the bar, or, or you know, enjoying some big sporting events on the screen down and playing some pool. But uh, we've had wedding receptions in here. Again, we've had all kinds of activities. Yeah. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. I have to ask if this pool is original, added on, what, how, what's the history? It goes back to the very beginning, yeah. When the Dodgers moved here in 48, it wasn't too long after that the pool came about. It, it didn't take them long to figure out that they wanted to... They're going to be in Florida, you know, yeah, they had to have a pool nearby. Yeah. Uh, this has got to be a great place again for folks to relax at. Yeah, really. If they're staying here, again, you'll see the kids out grabbing some sun, especially those kids that are coming down from the north early on in the year. But uh, another great place, too, that will host a lot of events, casual, you know, whether it be barbecue, summer parties, pool parties with churches. We've had all kinds of groups that come out and enjoy the area. The uh, capacity of this pool must be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's a competition-sized pool. And as you can see, you know, it's got a shallow end. It has a deep end. And, and uh, yeah, we've had some pretty large groups out here so that really makes it fun. Do you ever use the pool for training also? Some of the swim teams have come down they use it for uh, you know whether they're working off the wall leg kicks and training in that regard or they go under and it I guess it's called lung capacity type training you know they're working on their endurance in that way. Right. We'll, we'll take one more um, stop along our tour of historic Dodger Town and that's going to be at the uh, the motel area yes? Yeah we'll swing up by the villas on Sandy Koufax Lane and, and show you those. Okay. Brady Ballard has been our tour guide. Uh, we're now in front of the... Uh, They're the historic Dodgertown Villas. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's 89 rooms right here on site. Ten of those are suites. Actually, two are cabanas back there by the pool. Uh, but again, we, we'll say they, they get three years worth of use within a year with all the folks coming through. Last two years combined, uh, our events have brought in 55,000 room nights to the area. And again, we've had corporate groups. We have some, one of our bank partners, you know, will put their executives here just because of the ideal location to their activities here. But yeah, we're working hard to, to ensure that it's, again, heads and beds to the area. People are aware of what's going on in Vero Beach and that, you know, this facility is being used to, to its maximum capacity and we're, you know, we'll continue to work day after day to make sure that that's going to happen because, you know, for the well-being of the community, uh, both financially, I think just uh, call it quality of life elements as well, it's good to know that this place is bringing people here. And again, they're doing it more today than even what the Dodgers did and that's what I, I don't think everybody realizes. Folks that want to know what's happening here at Historic Dodger Town, what's the best way for them to find out? Still HistoricDodgerTown.com, go to the website, I mean even before calling over, HistoricDodgerTown.com will list the events, show you some history, show you all the things we can do again for your banquet, retirement party, all those other social activities that we can accommodate. We have a, a monthly newsletter that goes out people can sign up for and again those press releases just to put the word out as to uh, you know, all the activities, the results and different for things that we're doing through the community. Brady Ballard is vice president here at Historic Dodgertown, one of the vice presidents, but he's in charge of giving us a tour today anyway, and I thank you very much thank for you. doing that.